This game recap is brought to you by Manscaped's Foot Duster Foot Deodorant. Say goodbye to stinky foot funk with this essential deodorant spray. Head over to manscaped.com and use the promo code SACCITY for 20% off and free worldwide shipping. The Foot Duster Foot Deodorant by Manscaped. The best protection any place below the waist. The Cleveland Browns took on the Jacksonville Jaguars in Jacksonville and defeated them 24-13. Deshaun Watson made his Cleveland Browns debut, and it was, well, it was a preseason game. That's all it really is. He went one for five for seven yards in his first game uh, since January 3rd of 2020 for the Texans. Uh, Aaron, what do you – is there takeaways from this at all? Was there anything that you saw from Deshaun Watson that that stood out to you in this game? Maybe some control, anything like that, that, that jumped off the page? Yeah, the biggest thing that jumped off the page for me was that he was on the field. Like He, he was on the field. Like We haven't seen this guy play football, strap it up, and actually get on the field in over a year. So I didn't care what the numbers were. I, I figured he'd be rusty. I figured there'd be some connection issues with guys. He doesn't have Amari Cooper out there. He doesn't have David Bell. Obviously, some other guys being hurt, losing him for the season, Jakeem Grants, those guys. This was about Deshaun Watson putting on pads, strapping up a helmet, getting to feel comfortable in a huddle again with his teammates again, and put the noise to bed. Like I, I get he's still going to have to answer questions. But the fact of the matter is, is he got to, for that 60 minutes, just entrench himself with football. And as an athlete, when you go out there and you're playing in a game, all those things on the outside world, they don't matter. No, that's the only time you can actually forget about them and let them just be what it is, that that white noise on the outside. And I thought he was able to do that. So to me, that was important, regardless of what happens with the suspension, regardless of his stat line. I thought Deshaun Watson being on the field was the biggest storyline in this game. And, And that's all I wanted to see was he got through the game. He's healthy. And, and we can move on now from here. Yeah, yeah. And, and the, there was another storyline, obviously, not as big as the Deshaun Watson storyline, but Kareem Hunt obviously is not going to be – is going to be holding out until he gets a new deal. The running backs for the Cleveland Browns, AJ, what did you see from them that maybe kind of told the story of maybe it's going to be okay in Cleveland if Kareem Hunt is not there? I mean, it's a running team, so I'm not surprised that they knew how to spot talent at the running back position. Jerome Ford looked pretty good, uh, running pretty decent. I mean, averaging 5.7 yards a carry. And, yes, I get it. It's preseason. We understand that. But even still, I mean, you're playing against guys who are fired up and trying their best out there. So uh, I I wouldn't say, like, oh, Kareem Hunt move over or anything like that. I don't think we're at that level. Maybe for Dearness Johnson. Uh, But, I mean, Jerome Ford, as good as he played, now it's about showing that again and again and again that you belong in this roster. You can become that third if Kareem Hunt's not going to be there, which I assume he will. But uh, it was nice to watch. Do it again. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I thought it was um, – I, I, I really liked what I saw from Jerome. I, I thought he looked good. I thought he just – I thought he looked fluid in the game. I didn't think that there was obviously – I think this Browns team could just use Jerome Ford in the way that they use Kareem Hunt. Maybe it won't be as effective, but I think that – it, the Browns will be fine without Kareem Hunt. And yeah. I, I liked what I saw from, from the rushing attack uh, from Cleveland. On the Jaguars side of things, I'm not going to give either one of you a question because I want to talk about the Jags. Uh, I want I want to talk, maybe get your thoughts on maybe. Scott, get I don't need to thought. talk. I don't need to talk. I don't need to talk. I don't care about Chuck. I don't need to talk. I, I don't need nothing to say. It don't matter. But then when his team comes yeah. up, hey, you guys don't get a question. It's all me. <laughs> Go ahead, man. Talk about your sorry. So, so talk, talk me off the ledge here, maybe. Because something that I really, really liked for from the Jags, I guess it's really not talking off the ledge. It's it's bring me down to earth. Something that I really liked from the Jags in this game was the play calling. We talk about preseason games all the time not being like not mattering so so much for like the player performances. But what I saw from the Jaguars, at least during this preseason game, especially when the starters were out there, there were a few third down plays where I've seen the Jaguars multiple times just run it up the middle or just do just some kind of play calling that would just be very questionable to me. And there were multiple times, especially with the first team offense, the Jaguars had a third down chance where they ended up having a, like almost like a reverse play, getting the first down. And that just gave me so much confidence. So much confidence in this team that may, that maybe we're going in the right direction. Am I wrong to, to think this, or should I be backing off a little bit? Or I'll am say I getting this. emotional? Right no, I'll say this because this is a that is the, such a fan um, statement, and it's okay. You know, it's not a bad thing. I, I'll, I'll say this: your play calling is going to be better this year because you have Doug Peterson. So 
I, I, I'll be honest. I didn't watch much of the Jacks' first team offense outside of a couple of carries from Travis Etienne because I really wanted to see him. But I didn't watch much else of it. But I didn't. I don't need to. I know what Doug Peterson's going to give me as a play caller. But when when you bring up things like running a reverse on third and it actually so I it actually the play I'm talking about I just I just remembered it I looked at the stats and I was like oh that touchdown from Trevor Lawrence was actually a bootleg plat pass to Evan Ingram on as a touchdown that was the specific play I was referring to because it just wasn't just like a, a just a a dink it was it wasn't just something but just let me finish I'm gonna tell you why I'm gonna tell you why <laughs> the reason you were excited about it is because it worked. Yes. As a fan, yes. as a right. fan, I will tell you, I get this all the time. The biggest things fans say when when stuff doesn't go right is, "Oh, why'd you run that play? No, no, That's a stupid no. play call." Like these guys are the most brilliant offensive minds in football. And he, he, yes, there are times where stupid play calls happen. We've talked about them before, taking a knee or quarterback sneaking at your own five yard line, <laughs> whatever. We get that, but. Most of the time, these guys know what they're looking for in a situation, know what kind of matchups they're looking for, that the average fan just doesn't know. And so when things work, it's, oh, man, I like that bootleg. It worked. Trevor Lawrence got out of the pocket. But if it was third and two, and maybe Trevor Lawrence does that, and they go, man, why didn't we just give it to Travis Etienne on a dump off or a handoff? Or, like, this is what always happens. So, yes, you are correct. They should be encouraged because they have a really good play caller in Doug Peterson who's going to do a good job. He's not going to be perfect, but he's going to do a good job. But as far as like picking out one particular play in preseason, I'm glad it worked. But no, I just wouldn't look at that play and say that's the reason why. I would look at the totality of having a new head coach that's a really, really brilliant offensive mind and a good play call. Yeah, that, that's what I'm excited for. We got to see Zay Jones get involved in uh... – in the offense, two for 47. Uh, Tim Jones was able to go five for 42. But, like, it, it just seems – it's I'm, I am excited for the season for the, for the Jaguars, especially as a fan. Uh, but on, on the defensive side of the ball, once again, Trayvon Walker is making plays. He's out there doing the damn thing. He is – he's going to be special, everybody. He is going to be special. I think he's going – and I remember – I do remember back in draft time – there was the conversation Aiden Hutchinson, Trayvon Walker, obviously, and there were. I was skeptical at first, and then and then I started listening to the right people, getting hyped on them, listening to the, listening to what I needed to hear about Trayvon Walker, and now we're seeing it right now because even if Trayvon Walker, Trayvon Walker didn't have a sack in this game, but he is all he's he is making an impact, and you can see it on every play. He's making an impact uh, on this defense. He had the he helped that force fumble. Trayvon Walker's going to be a dude. Sir, you ain't seen nothing yet, man. They haven't even started to scratch the surface with what they're going to want to do with Trayvon Walker. His skill set is just so unique. I mean, imagine what happens when they start disguising him and dropping him into coverage for real and shutting down some of these easy cross-the-middle plays and these digs and daggers. Like, uh, you have, you ain't seen nothing. <laughs> I thought, You're I mean, right. He's going to be special. but this is, why, this is why you take him over Aiden Hutchinson. It's not a knock on Aiden Hutchinson at all. It's the upside is limitless. Like this could be, and it's going to sound so crazy. This could be the best pass rusher of all time. The best, like he has the skill set of an elite generational style talent. You just hope that it, it all works out and it, it comes together. It's it. also a bigger likely for a bust when you make that pick. And I think that's the risk reward factor you have there. But I think they're going to be smart with him. I don't think they're going to ask him to do all that stuff, AJ. I think they're going to say, Go get the quarterback. And it's the reason why you draft a Devin Lloyd, a Chad Muma. You, you build that linebacking core up where you don't have to have him drop back. You just say, use all of your athletic freakness and you go get the highest paid person on the field, which is that quarterback, and you wreak havoc that way. And, yes, they will use him in unique ways to get to their, that point, stunts, you know, whatever, to get him off the edge, line him up in the middle, A gap, B gap. Maybe he's up sometimes. Maybe he's down. I think they will do some of that. But they are going to keep it very simple, especially year one, and say, year go one. get the quarterback. You know what I mean? I, I think you saw a lot of that with Micah Parsons last year. They went, they yeah. took him out of that role in the middle linebacker, and they said, you know what? Like, that's great. We have you. You can do so much. But we don't want you. Just go get the quarterback. And it changed the way Dallas's defense was able to do things. I think that's going to have the same impact with Jacksonville if they just tell Trayvon, go get that quarterback. And last last note on the on Trayvon yeah, Walker. Ten minute segment for the Jags. Sorry, yeah, that happened. That happened. I'm, I'm very excited. I'm, I'm very excited for this team. There was one play, 
call me crazy. It was it's probably stupid, but there was one play crazy. he had a very like he lowered the boom on a player. He, he hit him, he cracked him, and everything. But like the it was a run play, and you see it develop over here, and then Trayvon Walker is getting blocked and he's stuck, but then he still comes up and makes the play, and he's just no there's no quit on the play. I love to see it. Love what the Jaguars are doing. They host the Pittsburgh Steelers on August 20th. The Browns, on the other hand, host the Philadelphia Eagles on the 21st. 